beautiful children. Hello, thank you. Welcome to Shameless Grab. Welcome to Contraceptive Comedy. We do this here every month. I am your illustrious host, Striker Spurlock. Right? Good, good to see you. I'm great. I love me. A little bit about me. I'm 41. I'm single. I'm a huge bitch, and I'm owning it. Right? Three cheers for my thick dick. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Thank you. I have a job. Right? Very sweet. I uh, I edit wedding videos. And I love it. That's a good job. I'd like to upgrade though to nature documentaries, so I can watch gorillas get married. <laughs> Be pretty dope, right? It's just like, do you, Coco, take Mr. Peanuts to be your lawfully wedded gorilla husband? And then a gorilla just throws turds at a priest. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Who wouldn't want that? I love apes. I love all the great apes. I love monkeys. They're great. My my girlfriend, she got me a book that is just full of pictures of apes, and I like to flip through it to calm down. Right? It's got all the primates in there. It's got chimps, bonobos, orangutans, and all the babies have my face pasted onto them. It's pretty cool. It's me and my little bonobo butt on my mama's back. I love it. Why wouldn't you? No, I like my job. I like my job uh, of editing wedding videos because it's real voyeuristic and filthy. Because you get to see these people on their big day, and it's horrible. It's just a lot of kissing. Just so much kissing. Just shot after shot of people kissing. Backwards. Rewind. Slow motion. Fast forward. If I got caught at any other job looking at this many videos of people kissing, I would be fired. <laughs> but here's just part of it. Just shots of women putting on shoes. Mm. <laughs> I don't like feet, but when I'm at work, it feels like I do. It's, hard, it's horrific. I don't like it. I don't care for it. Well, I do care for uh, Oh, no, actually, it's, it's interesting watching all these wedding videos because all these people are much different than I am, right? And I get to learn things about people, which is nice, I guess. Uh, like I found out, people really like God, it turns out. I had no idea growing up, because I didn't grow up with any kind of God in my life, but I was around religious communities. Like, I, I lived in Kentucky, so there were Southern Baptists, and I lived in Utah, so there was Mormons, and the whole time, I thought everybody was just kind of kidding. Like, it was a formality thing, like singing Happy Birthday, like nobody was really into it, but everybody kind of did it. But it turns out, people really love God, and I didn't, I had no idea about any of this. Like, they were, they were, Every, every wedding, they read the thing from the Bible. I don't even remember what it's called, but the thing about love not being mean or whatever. What is that called? Some Paul letter? I don't know. I thought it was from the Tree of Life. I thought it was from a movie. It turns out it's from the Bible, which I haven't read that either. They read that, and they read a quote from Dr. Seuss. Every wedding. It's horrific. Those are the two things that people like to read. It's the Bible and Dr. Seuss. That's all you need. Fuck the Da Vinci Code. You don't need that. Just God and a hat with a cat underneath it. I got that backwards. I meant to say a cat wearing a hat. Don't matter though. Changing years. I love my girlfriend. My girlfriend is great. Uh, and I think we work so well together because we are both emotionally vacant concrete people. <laughs> we both don't have a lot of feelings and it jives really well. My girlfriend and I are just two cowboys sitting in a truck. <laughs> looking at the gray Montana sky, thinking about these horses we gotta break. <laughs> <laughs> and just the horses, nothing else. No, no internal feelings, none of this self-actualization bullshit. We spit chaw onto your self actualization. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend, we just love breaking horses and their the terrain. We love creosote and cedar post fences and big old floppy horse dicks. This is all we think about. This is all we think about. But my girlfriend and I, we uh, we, we we like to keep things spicy, right? We like to spice things up. We like to. Uh, what my girlfriend and I like to do is we like to fantasize about getting another girlfriend, right? Just a fantasy, just something to spice things up. We do that, and we do, uh, she puts me in what we like to call anal jail, right? <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep things lively. 
But we don't have time for another woman. We can't, we don't have the emotional capacity to handle another woman's feelings. If my girlfriend and I got a girlfriend, it would just be us hiding while she cries. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. Do you? No. Let's go not feel elsewhere. Let's break this woman's heart. <laughs> Which is kind of sexy in a way, isn't it? It's like, hmm, I don't know. I think it is. <laughs> Like, you know, just like seduce another grown woman and like make her love both of us and then be like, no, it's kind of hot. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, that was all I really wanted to do for you tonight. Thank you very much. The next comic is very funny. He's one of fair people in town. Please give it up for Ben Johnson. Nobody let me forget that my phone is there. <laughs> I appreciate that. I've had a long day today. Uh, I might be too old to be doing this, but I, I got in a fight with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd like if you would, if you would, uh, what's the word, um, humor me. I should know that. <laughs> that should come to mind a little bit faster than what it did uh, in this setting. And uh, this is just new age trippy bullshit, but I, if you guys could all just kind of with me, kind of close your eyes, and if I could take you guys to just a, a guided meditation real quick, breathe in, and breathe out. All right, how about a quick round of applause for Stryker, everybody? Stryker? No, in your mind, in your mind. Everybody in your mind, clap for Stryker Spurlock. And, oh, listen to that, nobody's clapping, Stryker. Oh, the last time I was here, there is a wall of vaginas on top of that bookcase. And I could not stop staring at the three dicks next to it. <laughs> <laughs> the entire show. And I just thought, what if that's just the same guy at different stages? <laughs> We're all slightly getting more and more. What if it's the same guy, but that's his hand? And breathe out. <laughs> and breathe in. Everybody kind of keep your own pace. How many times do you think the word genitalia is in print in this room? And breathe out. I used to get called Benitalia in high school. <laughs> But that's just because I'm awesome. Breathe out or in, whichever one you're on. <laughs> Everybody just stay kind of in sync, kind of not in sync. This is still bullshit. It's not going to help you in your life. Just everybody picture my dad <laughs> in their head and be mad at him. Throw a Taco Bell wrapper at him. I heard the awe. That's not what we're doing. We're breathing right now. <laughs> Just come back to the breath, like a wave, like it's an ocean guided by your Benitalia. <laughs> like your thigh gizzard. And breathe out. I'm never going to be famous. Breathe in. Everybody breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm going to start the set. Uh, oh, yeah. Guys, I'm glad I don't read Chinese, because uh, reading makes me sleepy, and they read up and down, so I feel like the entire time I would just be going, and back up. And that was going to be a one, and I think maybe back to breathing? No. We're going to start. We're going to keep doing a set. Those are the dicks. I'm going to not look at the dicks. Uh... You guys, uh, all these Facebook posts have been riling me up recently. They always go by this archetype of there's only two types of people in this world, A or B. And I think they're painting with very broad strokes, leaving out giant groups of people. It's always something like, only two types of people in this world, fans of the classic family TV sitcom Full House and unregistered sex offenders. <laughs> Only two types of people in this world. People that like spicy food and the 1984 New York Yankees. 
Only two types of people in this world. Comedians that can make seamless segues in between jokes. And did you guys know this? And I found this out the other day. So there is a, uh, I saw this uh, person who, uh, a dog owner, who had a crucifix on their dog's collar. And I thought one of two things. Either they were for sure that all dogs go to heaven, or... I met the St. Bernard. <laughs> you want a treat, buddy? My heart is full of forgiveness. That's the only treat that I need. And hold your breath. <laughs> and spit. Uh, you guys, I am going to take a stand tonight. I am taking a stand against dick pics. Mostly for kids my age, not for the bulk of the crowd that I see in here. Thank you, Sarah's family, for coming out and supporting me. I hope nobody gets into a fight on the way home in the car and being like, I told you we shouldn't go. No, I said we need to support her. It's family. Some things are more important than having to stare at things you don't support at in the background behind a comedy show you don't understand. But thank you so much for coming out and supporting this bullshit. Taking a stand against dick pictures. <laughs> a lot of gross dudes coming out of the woodwork. Don't be a gross dude. What would Alexander Graham Bell think of dick pics? Inventor of the telephone. Because I think he'd either be disgusted or he'd think it's pretty cool that we turn the phone into that. Right? <laughs> or the third option is he'd be like, yeah, no, duh. Why do you think I invented the phone? <laughs> you know how you had to send dick pics before me? You had to put your dick in a can with a string attached to it. <laughs> attached to another can. And the girl on the other end of the line's like, make it hit the sides of the can. <laughs> And you're like, what? I can't hear you. Are you naked? The girl's mom comes into the room angry. What are you doing over there? She has to put the can down really fast. Very faintly, off in the distance, you just hear, don't tug on the string. The sharp edges. The girl's mom walks over to the can. like, I don't get new technology. What do you do with it? I don't know. <laughs> you kids. She shakes her finger. You guys, I have a lot of goals. Comedy's a big goal of mine. I've already showed you how I feel about how that's going. Uh, I would also like to be assassinated. Because I think you got to be a pretty big deal to get assassinated. You can't just be a Joe Schmo sitting at home watching cartoons all day. That's what I did all day. Uh, you have to be out there making moves. Like, I know my parents wouldn't be happy unless I get assassinated. Like, the authorities walk up to my room. Mrs. Johnson, we're sorry to hear about your loss. Don't even worry about it. He couldn't, he couldn't even get assassinated. He was just murdered. His brother got assassinated. Maybe I should stop being so catty all the time and figure out who keeps killing my sons. <laughs> my, uh, my buddy is a volunteer firefighter. And I think that's awesome, sweet, service to the community, it's invaluable. But I find it weird, that's the only one that you can volunteer as. <laughs> right? You can't volunteer as a policeman, superheroes don't exist. You can't volunteer as a paramedic, you think anybody's ever tried? <laughs> Showed up to a car accident, like, nobody worry, I'm the volunteer, oh my god, that's a lot of blood. <laughs> Quick, get this band back to my car. My father is a volunteer trauma surgeon. <laughs> Part-time, full-time garbage man, volunteer trauma surgeon. And spit. Everybody turn your head and spit. Oh, no, hold on. Done with that. Apparently, I learned today... She's listed in the bathroom as being, not a deviant, but known for promiscuity, but Catherine the Great got a bunch of furniture made with a bunch of, like, dicks into the furniture. You knew about this. You're nodding your head like it's commonplace now. <laughs> Where did you learn this? That is what I'm most interested in now. It is less Russian about... Russian history and literature. Russian history and literature. Oh, I wish I could say one word of Russian so we could kind of have a bond here. No, but here we are. Uh... Somebody get them. They're a bunch of commies. <laughs> I'm going to turn my head. You kill them. <laughs> huh? That's, that's you? No. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're not. We're not. We're not. I, uh, for a time, I spent uh, a lot of time as a uh, delivery driver. And you guys, it is so easy to get a job as a delivery driver. The application didn't ask for my social security number. It didn't even ask for my name. There was just a picture of a car uh, <laughs> with a box with a thumbs up next to it and then a frowny face next to it. I clicked in the middle, and now I'm director of sales. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! In the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play uh, World of Warcraft for a super long Woo! time. Over, I don't know who did the woo. Was that Russian people? Oh, man. All right. Uh, little do you know, I know everybody else in here by name, except for the commies. Nobody's killed them yet. Somebody needs to kill the commies. The Red Menace is the Red Menace. He's their uh, Lenin, and they got the fists up, and they want means to production, which is communism stuff. Um, they used to play World of Warcraft. Uh, those of you that don't know, it's kind of like my generation's Dungeons and Dragons, but with Dungeons and Dragons, you actually have to go out and see your friends. Like, I hear about Dungeons and Dragons, I'm like, that kind of sounds outdoorsy. <laughs> you actually have to go outside, like, don't you melt or die? It looks hot out there sometimes. <laughs> but, like, I think I am actually pretty sweet at talking to the ladies because of my experience on World of Warcraft. Like, ma'am, what's your name? Are you willing to help me out real quick? Kate. Kate, uh, can I call you Raven Witch Mistress 420? Yes. <laughs> Alright, I'm not actually going to do that, but let's role play real quick. Not the sexy kind, the nerdy kind. It's a role playing game. Uh, real quick, and just uh, going to go back and forth show you guys all how sweet I am at talking to chicks because of my experience on World of Warcraft. Uh, hey, dot, dot, dot. Uh, how are you? Good. Haha, ha, cool, lol. Okay, lol. Are you really a girl? Uh, yes. <laughs> That was the punchline. You got it. <laughs> I am level 60 and slaying puss in Azeroth. <laughs> and I'm a blacksmith. You didn't look like, like that because you're yeah. rubbing your back of your neck, but maybe that's in my head. I'm sorry. You got your mouth open now. Let's rip it all the way back to the back of the room. Let me just point fingers at people. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Uh, round of applause, who in here knows what conversion therapy is? It's not something to applaud, but those of you who know it. <laughs> I should probably do this by a hand raise, actually, after having done this stuff now for quite some time. Probably a hand raise will do it in a fully lit room. <laughs> hand raises are fine. But for those of you who don't know, it's whenever they try to make gay people straight using shock treatments. Now, I think that's pretty, uh, pretty dumb. I think it's really dumb, but for the people that believe that, why would it only work the one way? <laughs> like, if you could turn a gay person straight, why couldn't you turn, like, electricity's not just God's tool, right? <laughs> He's not just sitting up in heaven like a mechanic, like, oh, he ain't gay or nothing, he just needed to jump. <laughs> like, the people that believe that, they must be afraid of, like, lightning storms, like, it's going to come down like an on-off switch. Like they must, other, must tell each other horror stories out in the woods around a campfire about a guy who got strapped down into an electric chair, but he didn't die. He just got gayer. <laughs> and they all jump, and then they laugh, and then the laughter gives way, and then they just start fucking blowing each other like so hard, like they're finally happy for the first time in their lives. Like it just feels right, like hands up, just trying to find, like... Trying to like, like a blind person trying to find a bathroom. Like, is this for men or women? I don't know. I just need this right now. <laughs> Weird. Not cool, guys. I think we gotta stop telling kids they can be whatever they want to be when they grow up. <laughs> I think at the age we start telling kids that they only know like three jobs. It's like astronaut, professional athlete. And president, like no kid has ever been put to the question, what do you, the kid, you can be whatever you want and grow up. No kid has ever said, I want to be a CPA. It's like, did you get into dad's blood pressure medication? Because you sound like an old man and it's bumming me out. Like, and by the time he figures out that president astronaut isn't even a real job, he will have been putting in like eight years of like waking up in the morning. He got so good at coloring inside the lines. He got so good at tying his shoes. He calls it lacing up. It's pretty intense. He's having dreams at night. Nothing will be better than he's having dreams at night of going to the moon with his favorite cartoon characters and doing cocaine. 
He doesn't even know what cocaine is. Foghorn Leghorn just had it. It's like, Foghorn Leghorn, why is your beak bleeding? I'll say, 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 boy, why don't you hand a bird a straw? I ain't your average rooster, you see. I'm not happy. I'm merely sitting on a rail. <laughs> it's a joke, you see, a joke. Why is it that women still take the last name in marriage? I think that's a leftover institution from a bygone era, and we don't need it anymore. It doesn't necessarily make sense in this era. What would happen then, progressive uh, shameless grounds, what would happen then if two men get married? They have to switch names, right? Doesn't make any sense. And what happens when two women get married? They just don't have names anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I've always said I want to exit this world the same way that I entered, on horseback. That's what happens when your mom has sex with a centaur and she has twins. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Oh, what about you, boy? I'm not done. <laughs> Why haven't you killed this commie, comrade, motherfucker? <laughs> this lemon loving, <laughs> Marxist prick. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for coming. Don't leave me. <laughs> That's what happens when your mom sucks to a centaur with the last punchline I said. <laughs> that means my brother's a horse's ass. What dad jokes coming at you? Fuck out. <laughs> I got the finger gun out. I can't guarantee anybody's safety. Uh, I had planned on talking about the singularity tonight. Anybody up on their sci-fi singularity? Of course you do. Uh, okay, Brewskis. Calm down. McCarthyism. Get into it, guys. You start putting these guys in fucking jail. Uh, singularity. People want to put all their thinks onto a computer. They want to put their brain onto a computer. But, like, I think that's pretty dumb. I think the people, everybody that I've heard talk about them wanting to be part on, the, on a computer when the singularity is already really bad at having conversations... Like, why have you figured out, why are you trying to figure out a way to have the technology to bring down a room 200 years in the future? Like, and I think it's pretty dumb because technology is not going to stop moving. It's going to keep, things are going to keep getting cooler and cooler, so you're just going to be a player piano on a computer, essentially, in the future. Like, in the future, I, Apple's going to have, like, an earbud that's going to pipe in a new type of personality where there's going to be, like, a jock and then two different types of goth. Right? In seven different colors. There's going to be, Amazon's going to be delivering babies using drones. <laughs> Conversion therapy, round of applause. <laughs> I'm going to take it down. I haven't completely whittled this out. And there's more to it. I think it's dumb. I really think it's dumb. I think, because if you don't, you, if you want me to stop, I'll stop. But I think, like, it's pretty dumb because... If you start updating people to be aware of new technological innovations people are having in the future, then you are no longer the person you were. Because the person you were didn't talk about the kind of gas mileage that hovercrafts are getting. And that is a prediction about what the future is going to be like. We're going to have hovercrafts, but they're still going to be run on petroleum and eth <laughs> is ethanol. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. wrong. I think a much better idea than the singularity. What if singularity is hell? What if there's another calling and the only way that they are cool, like they put some sort of virus in people and so it kills off anybody that regularly eats fast food, right? So it gets rid of the whole lower class. That's what I think would happen if they put a virus in fast food. Uh, so I'm gone completely. But the only way that Congress signed off on it is if we put everybody's brain onto a computer first. So what if, what if it's hell? What if you are completely deprived of all of your senses completely, but for the first time in your entire existence, you have the ability to instantly analyze accurately every situation you're a part of, but you have no control or any power over it? Hey, how are you guys doing? Nice to come to the show. And at this point, of all points, wave, wave. Kill those communist motherfuckers in front of you. Because they're communists. And we've been over this. Are you also communist? I should probably ask that first. Just, just socialist. 
Socialist. Keep an eye on them. You sit at the same table. I only want to have to kill one table in here. What if then we are like, so every once in a while we just show up on people's device. I'm sorry this is a long draft drag through this, but I have other, I have other craft material coming after this. And then we just, so all these people that got killed off in depopulation just show up on everybody else's devices from time to time like ghosts that are just haunting the world. And it's like hell in between then. And they just rapidly reincarnate in different parts of the world all the time. They get ripped out of it. And then they're just in an ocean of binary for a time. It's like, I briefly saw my daughter. And then I got ripped out just to be, just to man somebody's Fitbit for a half hour. You know the irony of being dead, having to monitor somebody's vital signs? It's terrible. And then I got ripped out only to get put in a white noise machine. That's nothing. <laughs> I think what's better than the singularity is if we put everybody into one giant brain and we'll call it something like New God, right? <laughs> It'll be this one giant, it looks exactly what you're picturing in your head. It's like a neon blue and there's wires coming out of it and it's in the middle of a mountain. And if you make the journey and complete a three-stage obstacle course, you can ask it a question. That's what we're going to do with it. We could use it to save everything, but we're going to use it instead as a game show to lead into local news. <laughs> it's going to be like, what is the best way I can, I can use a lead a fulfilling life? And it's going to be like, uh, real quick though, uh, tonight another building is on fire. <laughs> what does it feel like to be born? Today's local peanut butter festival went over just okay, and uh, that's uh, this a love thing I wrote in the middle of the night, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to something. But the singularity, I'm not on board. Just stick to playing cards, everybody. Uh, you guys, I've been trying to figure out a way that I can like leave a legacy, but without actually doing anything. <laughs> Right, because you read about all these people soaring to these great heights and realizing their potential, and that just sounds like a bunch of work to me. I bet I can cut some corners, but long term, because you can have kids, but kids die, right? You know how houses are just kind of like room temperature microwaves where people slowly rotate for 80 years before they're done? So what I was thinking, if I could just get the biggest fucking tombstone I could possible, that's all you really need. Right? Nobody here has driven past the cemetery, seen the guy with a huge tombstone, and thought, that guy's parents are probably disappointed. <laughs> giant, <laughs> uh, giant, throbbing tombstone. And I'm not going to get cremated either. That shit's for squares. Makes you smaller. <laughs> get with spinal extensions and sew my eyes open, because I'm going to want to look at that tombstone. <laughs> ben Johnson, 1991 to infinity. Fight me underground. <laughs> buried in a small coffin, I'm going to be buried in my trailer. <laughs> Captain goes down with his ship. <laughs> I'm going to be buried in my trailer like a white trash pharaoh. <laughs> Get an Egyptian headdress with two beer cans on it. Right skinnered on the walls and hieroglyphics. <laughs> I am Ozymandias. Y'all look at what I got to be saying. <laughs> Standing outside the pearly gates, loitering, not even in line, smoking a cigarette. Like, yeah, I know you want me in there, but I didn't party with my grandparents before, and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> Angels rushing through paperwork like counts. You can't even send him to hell if he doesn't even check in. Crack <laughs> open the sixer and watch the sunrise at Purgatory's penthouse. Hey, finger guns back out. Nobody's safe, huh? <laughs> it's a nice little ball on the end of that one. I don't know if I, uh, guys, I don't know if I want to have kids or not. I think I'm still at an age. I'm not, I'm not sure what I want. Probably still too feel still too old to be fighting with my dad. So maybe kids is a jump, uh, or maybe not. Maybe that just never stops. But I think we can all agree. I think we can all agree that if we stopped having kids completely, that last like 75 to 80 years of species would be pretty nice, right? You don't have to be listening to kids crying out in public. You can swear wherever you want to. Child predators are flummoxed. <laughs> and I'm sorry if there are any child predators in the room. I hope your your uh, bounce castle rental business is jumping. <laughs> then I know what you guys are saying to yourselves. What would happen? Like 75, 
to 80 years without long-term repercussions for your actions? Won't there be rampant lawlessness and looting? Yes, there will be, but everybody's going to be old. And that sounds like the best way for us to go out as a species. Just one planet run by a giant senile gang. Snorting blood thinner and throwing slow, weak punches in the street. Then we're gone. Maybe that'll leave room for another species to walk upright. Maybe evolve a consciousness. Maybe bears. What? Bear in his bear tie going to his bear job. I'm starting to come around on this whole end of the human species thing. This new world sounds adorable. <laughs> going to church every Sunday, like, here's a church, here's a steeple, look inside at all the bears. Oh. Hey, boo-boo, quit on on that book. That's the word of God. Nobody defaces the bear bowl. But I'm sure they'd have questions. <laughs> How could they not? I'm sure they'd look at themselves in the mirror and be like, I'm a monstrosity. How could there be a higher power? And how could there be one? Whenever we came into this world, there were these skyscrapers, and they were just abandoned. And why were the streets covered in guns, walkers, and condoms? <laughs> then I do an English heel click. <laughs> that is what I do. And then I go home and cry and eat a tub of Ben & Jerry's ice cream, because I get sad like a girl. <laughs> uh, that is the truth. <laughs> you guys are new. Do you guys think that it's the same guy's dick, just at different stages? <laughs> that is the question. In the air. Or it's like a Freddy Krueger claw hand. <laughs> Kluger? <laughs> Who's Freddy Krueger? <laughs> I don't know, but he's on the case. <laughs> Freddy Krueger, P.I. <laughs> I'm haunting your dreams <coughs> until I find the, the, the perp. Perp. <laughs> the, the perps. The perp before they're anything. All they can think about is crime. She is texting. I need to wrap this up. <laughs> I cannot blame her. <laughs> I save all my texting for when I'm driving. <laughs> and that's where I eat all my meals. You ever see somebody like looking at you while you're eating? It's like, excuse me, I'm having dinner, please. <laughs> Even though I'm at a stoplight. Uh, I'll do one more. Leave. I, uh, I love you. Um, I challenge myself. I play a game with myself. I try to find the good in any situation, because I think even if something is inherently bad, there must have been something good to have come out of it. That being said, I think if anything came out of having serial killers, stay with me, <laughs> is that we can look at that as like a measuring stick for what angry really is. Because I think we've all had a bad day at work, come home from work and thought, I could kill my boss. I could actually do it. Read one paragraph of Jeffrey Dahmer's Wikipedia page and see if you feel the same way. <laughs> After Dahmer lured his victim back to his apartment and strangled them to death, he decapitated them and kept their head in the freezer and had sex with, you know what, I think I was just having a bad day, for real. <laughs> like how many times you get like halfway through sawing through their neck and you're like, you know what, I don't even want to have sex with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I had something cute to close on, but I don't. Uh, just thank you guys so much for coming out and supporting this whole show. Thank uh, you guys. Enjoy the rest of the show. Well, Benny Barrett Johnson, everybody. One more time for that. Keep that buzz going here. Very funny. Give it up for Sarah Persich. Give a moose a muffin, give a mouse a cookie, all the classics. 
uh, and then just kind of slip in some really heavy-handed Ronald Reagan biographies every now and then. It's really, <laughs> it's really nice. Um, yeah, it, it was good. And I don't like when I was in like fourth grade, uh, I could join band if I wanted to, right? Um, and this was on the heels of the Bob Dole, Bill Clinton uh, smackdown, I guess. I don't know what you, what you call that. Uh, and I wanted to play the saxophone more than anything in the world. And my mom said, no way, that's what Bill Clinton plays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that I, I was gonna, I thought that was the main difference between like, like Republicans and Democrats was that Republicans were not allowed to play the saxophone as well, uh, during my formative years. So I had this great plan uh, to just like do really well in school, keep my head down, run for president uh, when I turned 35, Republican of course, uh, and reform the party and make it so that Republicans could play the saxophone and Democrats had to play their dad's old trumpet. <laughs> My mom's very sweet. She, everyone, look at, look how, look at her little scarf. She's very kind and sweet and supportive uh, of my sister, who's very talented. I'm <laughs> 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 very proud of her. <laughs> uh, I'm living, I'm living. My husband and I just moved into my parents' basement. Because you ever just feel like things are going too good? You know? Woo! He's got to switch up a little bit. It's been good. We're saving up. Uh, we're, we're living there right now so we can save up a little money, buy some land. <laughs> buy me some land. That's all. Put a trailer on it, maybe. Just be my, be my best self. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, when my husband and I were like a year into our relationship, uh, I moved in with him into his trailer in the woods. Classic all-American love story. <laughs> Just like in the movies. Uh, it was cool, we had a pretty good run in the trailer. Um, we had an awful mouse problem. And if, if you've ever like lived in a trailer at any point in your life, you probably had some sort of mouse problem. But if you stick that trailer in the middle of the woods and just like knock out chunks of the floor, and go to Menards to get rugs to cover the holes. You have like a serious mouse problem. <laughs> uh, and it got pretty bad. It got to a point, I don't have a nice way to say this, so I'm really sorry if you're eating. Um, I had a mouse drown himself in my dishwater. <laughs> it sucked. It was so bad. And I think it was just like the mice, we had had so many mice at that point that they were just like trying to find cool new ways to kill themselves. <laughs> Another peanut butter snap trap. You wish, Sarah. I'm gonna choke on my. I'm gonna choke on my own vomit in your living room floor. Eat all the insulation out of your lunchbox. <laughs> friends don't know to flip them over because he's a mouse. Flips. I think the mouse. I think he. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. What happened was I. I cooked like a nice meal. Uh, you know, try, trying to be a good lady. Cooked a nice meal and I let the dishwater sit in the sink, like just for a reasonable amount of time. And I went to go pull the stopper out of the drain, and I was like, what's that, some spinach? I'm trying to eat right, good for me. Oh, it's a mouse, what the fuck? And <laughs> I just like ran the length of the trailer four or five times, which isn't that long, but if you do it enough, you get really winded. <laughs> and I think it just like, he was like, I don't know, like his friends were just like, Frankie always loved the water. <laughs> he went on his own terms, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, my sister, my sister has a mouse problem, but it's not a mouse. It's like it's a guinea pig, and it's a different one every month because they keep dying, and she just keeps buying new ones. <laughs> she just like puts them in the same cage and paints a new name on the front, which probably has something to do with why they keep dying. <laughs> it's upsetting. It's cool. It's what happened. When, I'll tell you. My sister and I. Okay, in 2009, the movie G Force happened. It's cool if you missed it. I'll get you up to speed. <laughs> uh, pretty good animated film. Tracy Morgan and some other people uh, voice talking guinea pig super spies. And they have all of the best technology 2009 had to offer. <laughs> Cell phones, touch screen, computers. A really good movie. Four out of five stars. 
Good girl. Uh, my sister and I were we were in college at the time. We were living together. It was my first time. It was like her third time in college. Just a good place for both of us. <laughs> and we're watching this movie for like the fourth time in one day. And my sister looks at me and she says, "Sarah, do you want to split a guinea pig?" <laughs> Which is a normal thing to say to another adult person. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, of course. For twelve dollars a piece, we could be the proud owners of a living creature." Um, so we, did, we went to the store and we bought a guinea pig and we named him Diego the Nightmare Sanchez because I'm pretty good at naming pets. Um, and Diego was cool. Uh, he had a good, we had him for like a couple of years and then my sister and I moved into like different places and he was kind of going back and forth. So I was like, you just keep him, you know, you're a better suited parent. Doing like a guinea pig from a broken home thing. That's the, uh, uh, and like a year later, my sister calls me and she's just like a mess. She's real upset. Um, and she's like, Sarah, like, I think Diego's sick. And like, it's probably because we've chain smoked inside for five years. <laughs> and she was like, no, that's not it. <laughs> Couldn't be it. And she's like, he's sick. Like, I think he's dying. And she's real upset. And I was like, Sam, it's not a big deal. He's 25 bucks. Like, just go get a new one. Okay. <laughs> I don't get big sympathizers. I don't mean to sound like me. I get what I'm saying. Okay. It's like a guinea pig is no one's family pet. You know, like, if it's not like a dog or a cat or a talking bird, like, no one's that sad if your pet dies. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, what I'm saying is. If a guinea pig gets sick, no one like takes him to the vet and is like, whatever it takes, doc. <laughs> Money's not an issue. I'd expect you all to do the same for me. It's <laughs> <Good. laughs> so going well. Uh, I love my grandma. That's not a joke. Why did my dad laugh at that? <laughs> no, just not, no, I love my grandma. She's a good lady. Uh, she's pretty cool. She, I have my sister's older than me, so she was, like, she was a used grandma when I got her, <laughs> which is fine. Beggars can't be choosers. Just gently used, you know what I mean? Like, like new condition. Like she has some miles on her, but she ran good. She's cool. I love my grandma. She's, uh, she just turned 86 in October. Um, 86 years young, as they say. She doesn't say that. <laughs> Other people say that too, or she's like, I'm 86 years old, quit patronizing me. <laughs> she's cool, she just turned 86. Uh, she's, her, my grandma's best friend is a woman named Betty Casanelli. Um, that's her real name, please don't bother this woman. <laughs> There's no better name than Betty Casanelli. Um, and my grandma, I talked to her the other day, and I was like, what's up, Granny, like, how's Betty doing, what's she been up to? And she said, oh, we don't see each other in the winter. <laughs> and I was like, that's so sad, but it's just, she just lives, my grandma doesn't even like Betty Casanelli, she just lives across the street from her. <laughs> and that's how you pick your best friend when you're 86 years old, it's just whoever is physically closest to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, my grandma, she's going through like a phase, she's getting older, 86, she's getting up there. Uh, so she's like always trying to send stuff home with me. Like I think she just wants to get rid of all her stuff. Uh, so that we don't do it for her when she dies. Um, and she's always trying to set stuff up with me, and it's not like stuff that anyone would want, per se. It's just stuff that is special to her. I went to visit her, and she brought me up to her guest room, and on the guest bed she had laid out just like every turtleneck she's ever owned. <laughs> just my grandmother's life work laid out in front of me. Uh, pretty impressive. And she's got just all, just all these different pastel color turtlenecks, you know, she's got a turtleneck for every occasion. She got one with little turkeys on it, little Christmas trees. And she's telling me, she's telling me all these stories about these turtlenecks. And she's like, I wore this to Jean Davenger's third wedding. And I'm like, really, Granny? A turtleneck to a wedding? All right. <laughs> and she's telling me all these stories. And I'm like, Granny, you obviously love these turtlenecks. You're very attached to them. You know, why don't you just keep them? And she looked at me and she said, I can't wear them, Sarah. I don't have a neck anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, you have a beautiful neck. Great. And you say to that, I don't know. I'll just stop having a neck. <laughs> you gotta reach for it a little bit, but it's in there. 
I used to think that uh, I had very sexy posture. <laughs> I don't. That's, I definitely don't. I don't think that's anything anyone might think about. Besides, like, 12-year-old Sarah Burson. Uh, I think if I have any sort of posture, it's the posture of, like, a second-string junior high softball player. <laughs> Not like exactly a year ago. That would be a very sad to spend my anniversary. Um, I got married roughly a year ago. A year ago in October. All right. So I got married like a year ago. Um, uh, and it was pretty cool. We did like a long, we did a two-year engagement, uh, like kind of so we could save money for the wedding, but mostly so that I could make my ultimate wedding playlist. <laughs> uh, and I did. It was really good. I worked for two years. I worked on the <laughs> ultimate wedding playlist. Uh, and it was perfect. <laughs> And we had the wedding, it was pretty cool. We got married at the park in my hometown, which sounds pretty depressing, but it was actually very quaint. Um, very tasteful, yeah, it was good. Yeah, you don't, don't do that. Yeah. 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 That's more, we live in my parents' basement. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, no, it, it was good though. And I worked on this playlist, and we didn't like hire like a band or a DJ or anything. I just, like I hired my sister's friend to play my ultimate playlist and I gave him like a memory stick and I was like, here's the best thing I've ever done. Um, and we just paid him in free beer, which everyone at the wedding got, but I don't think he realized that. So he was happy. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was a good time. It was a, it was a good, it was, a, it was good. He did a good job. And he got through like the ceremony and the first dances and whatever. Um, and then like he started like really getting into the deep cuts, you know, um, and like half an hour in, he realized that like no one was really dancing, which I think really freaked him out. And I was like, perfect, that's, I don't want to dance. Because <laughs> deep in my heart of hearts, I'm a 55 year old man. And I was like, I just want to sit and drink box wine. And my ultimate wedding playlist was like basically just a three hour long Steely Dan discography. <laughs> um, I just want everyone to sit and make polite small talk and go home at a reasonable hour. It's my dream wedding, like I always wanted to. <laughs> you know, um, but he got really, he got really shaken up at like the 30 minute mark because no one was dancing, you know. Um, and he switched over to this like weird, like top 40s chart toppers, pop hits kind of thing. You know, and I was real busy the whole time at the reception, trying to make sure my grandma didn't see me smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't much I could do about it. And I remember uh, I was with my little cousin, um, who now knows that I smoke cigarettes. Um, I was hiding behind the park pavilion. Again, much more tasteful than it sounds. Uh, I was smoking a cigarette and talking to her, and I heard like the Cupid shuffle come on. And I was like, well, he's supposed to be playing Deacon Blues right now, what's happening? Uh, but by that point it was just too late. You know, like all my aunts and uncles were drunk on Franzia doing the electric slide. I was like, it's done. <laughs> so it, was, it was upsetting. It was overall like pretty good wedding, fine, you know, best day of my life, sure. Um, four out of five stars because of the music. <laughs> You know, and it's, just, it's weird, like now, the past year, I feel like I'm just, like I didn't get, like I didn't get to listen to like Mr. Blue Skies, me and my dad's song, you know, and that was like gonna be my big payoff, like thanks for raising me, here's the song I played at my wedding, didn't happen, you know, like, like a really good, that was my big, I, mean, I know, you know, and it just, like every now and then, like a really good classic rock, mellow song from the 60s and 70s will come on Sirius Sex Sense the Bridge and I just get a little sad like at the missed opportunity you know like what I'm saying is <laughs> that was the last time that I could like get everyone that I know together and they have to sit quietly and listen to the music that I like <laughs> that was the whole point of the wedding right <laughs> and like that's the last time I get to do that until maybe like my funeral <laughs> So that's what I'm working on now. 
is my ultimate funeral playlist. <laughs> it's gonna be really good. <laughs> it's gonna be good. And it's not there's no two year time restriction on this one, I don't think. <laughs> so I could just spend literally the rest of my life perfecting it. Um, Are we invited? Sure. Yeah, $5. <laughs> 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 a striker at the door. <laughs> I'll be seating people. I don't know. It's, I'll walk you through. This is basically just story time with Sarah Versus, so buckle up. But I've crafted it. I just want to kind of get your feedback on it. So this is what I'm thinking for my ultimate funeral playlist. Okay, like we come in. Uh, we'll have everyone sit down. And so they mingle, maybe we'll have like shrimp, something nice, you know, like a shrimp ring. It's <laughs> a good shit. Um, we'll have everyone sit, and then we'll do uh, Blackbird by the Beatles, right? That's a good, like, get you kind of in the mood, ease into it, sing along if you want, whatever. Um, and then we'll do uh, In My Life by the Beatles, which was the song my dad and I danced to at my wedding. And then, I know, it's very nice. And then he'll get up and say a few words. Um, I, don't know, I don't know why I assume my parents will be at my funeral. Um, for your sake, I hope you're not. That would be very sad. For my sake, I kind of hope they come. Um, I hope you can make it. Because uh, just they like, they like me the best out of anyone that I know. <laughs> so they would have like, the, real, like, the best stuff to say. So my dad will say a few words. It'll be really moving. Uh, he'll sit down, and then we'll put on uh, Carol King, So Far Away. Yeah, oh. saying by my sister, who I've been texting all this stuff. As I come up with it, I text it to my sister. She's getting real sick of it. Um, but I, like, I'm pretty sure that if I save the text messages, that counts as like a living will. <laughs> and I think it's legally binding. <laughs> Um, and so she'll be, and I told her, I was like, you know, if you can't sing Carol King at the, at the funeral, I don't know, I assume she'll be there too. You know, maybe, maybe just record it now. <laughs> uh, just so it's good, you know? Like, I don't want you to bomb at my funeral, that would be really upsetting. <laughs> so maybe record it now, but really think about how you're going to feel when I die. Like, you know what I mean? Like, think it's tragic, you know, and sing it. And record that and then send it to me and I'll tell you if it's okay or not. <laughs> uh, so she'll do that. It'll be really moving. Uh, and then we'll put on the Stampeders, Sweet City Woman. Just kind of bring it up a little bit. The song doesn't really apply to me or my life at all, but it's just a fun song. Kind of lighten the mood a little bit. Um, yeah, and then I told her, I texted Sam and I, my sister, and I was like, okay, Sam. And then at this point, if people are really having a good time, you can play Hall & Oates for a couple of hours, whatever. You know, it's basically my ultimate wedding playlist, just at a different time. Uh, and then when it's time to like get out of there, just loop Al Green for the good times until the crowd clears. Um, and then, like I imagine, it'll happen. Like uh, if she could just time it, this would be perfect. This would be the kicker. If she could just time it, so my dad would be the last one out, probably. Um, and you know, because stick around, it's sad. Um, and he'll go get that long wool coat that he always wears to funerals um, and get his little fedora. Yeah, I had a fedora. I don't know if he, do you still have it? Okay, maybe get another one. <laughs> as he's leaving, he'll throw his coat over his shoulder and put the fedora on. And as he's going out the door, if we could just time it so that Mr. Blue Sky plays, and he'll look back at the casket and be like, that'll do, Sarah. <laughs> going through what I like to refer to as an accelerated midlife crisis, because <laughs> uh, I'm like 28, hopefully this isn't halfway, uh, we'll see, I don't know, I made some questionable decisions, ate a lot of steak, we'll see. <laughs> see how it plays out, um, but I like to call it an accelerated midlife crisis, but I'm in like this weird spot where like I don't have the financial means to have a proper midlife crisis, you know, like I can't buy a cool new car, I leave my husband for a younger woman. <laughs> so I'm just kind of like copying what my dad does. <laughs> just, yeah, it's like I don't fall asleep watching TV a lot. <laughs> Mowing the grass in high white socks. <laughs> Filing formal complaints with City Hall about my neighbor's lawn. <laughs> Something like that. 
I, don't, I think I just have all of like the worst qualities of a middle-aged man <laughs> trapped in this situation. Like, I could set up like a really unstable Wi-Fi connection for you. <laughs> just convince you there's no better way to do it. <laughs> Start all these woodworking projects. I'm not that. You know? So now I just have like a backyard full of unfinished woodworking projects. Like, why buy a coffee table when I could build half of one? <laughs> I uh, hang out at my parents' house a lot. It's, I mean, I live there now. When I wrote the joke, when I wrote the joke originally, I was just visiting them. <laughs> we decided to make it personal. Uh, I, I do. I hang out with my parents. Uh, well, I hang out. My dad. My dad has a really cool dog. My parents got a dog. Uh, she's a hunting dog. She's a purebred black Labrador Retriever. Her name is Artemis. Goddess of the hunt. Dad's real good at naming pets. Uh, <laughs> and I hang out with her a lot in a what I call the party shed in my parents' backyard, which isn't as much of a party shed as it is just a shed my dad built when he turned 50. <laughs> that he put a radio and a fridge in, and so we call it the party shed. Kids' <laughs> in there, it's very cozy. Um, and I, I hang out with my parents' dog in there a lot. One night I was out there, and my mom stuck her head out the back door, and she was like, Sarah, how long do you think you'd be in the party shed tonight? <laughs> and she does. And I said, I don't know, Mom. I got a decade of Steely Dan. I'm going to be a while. <laughs> uh, I hang out there a lot with Artemis. Uh, she's a cool dog. I realized, like, hanging out with her that I was starting to get kind of like shitty and jealous of her, <laughs> like how girls do when they spend too much time together. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I, like I sleep till noon and roll around on my back in the living room floor and no one thinks it's cute. <laughs> no one takes me to the hunting lodge and shows me up to the barmaid and says, isn't she pretty? <laughs> it's a good dog. She's, uh, she was at an age, uh, she's old, she's like really old now, uh, but she's, uh, she was at an age where my parents could like breed her if they wanted to. She's a purebred dog, uh, make a little extra scratch, you know, hard times. Um, and my dad was looking for a stud for her. That's what they call that when you do with the dogs. Um, he was looking for a stud for her, and I just was kind of like, I've done all my own legwork in finding a mate, you know? <laughs> and like, should I ever have children with that mate? They're not going to be worth 300 bucks a piece. <laughs> Legally, I don't, know. I don't know how the black market works on selling your kids. I don't know. I was really hoping that, like, as Artemis got older, that she'd start to, like, I don't know, bark at the wind and, like, fart a lot and everyone would hate her and it'd be like Sarah Show again. You know? <laughs> but it hasn't happened that way. Like, she's aging very gracefully. <laughs> like, she's got a little salt and pepper kind of thing going, a little experience with youth, you know? Talks a little slower. No. Spends more time with the people she loves. I don't know, she's like the Jamie Lee Curtis of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> it's a cool dog. <laughs> she, I really, I wanted a dog when I was a kid more than like anything in the entire world. Uh, and my parents, I think, were like, you're not ready for that. And I did like a trial run on just like the worst pets, mostly fish. There's a lot of fish. Went through a lot of them. Really burned through them quick. Not good. I think at one point, my sister and I just had a bunch of goldfish named after everyone involved in the O.J. Simpson trial. <laughs> We're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel there. Um, but I, I really want a dog. And my parents were like, will you accept a guinea pig instead? And I was like, yeah, next best thing. Um, so they bought me a guinea pig. They bought me, like, she was a used guinea pig when I got her. <laughs> Cool. Call back. That's fine. <laughs> no, she was cool. She, I named her Nips Nibbles Versage. I wasn't good at naming pets yet. Um, and she was pretty cool. She was Nips was four when I got her. Uh, and guinea pigs have a life expectancy of about five years. I found out one year later. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Uh, what happened was she uh, she passed in the night, as they say. Natural causes, no foul play suspected. Uh, my mom found her in the morning before school, 
And like I had a spelling test that day, so she just like kind of set her up right, you know. Oh. I would have done the same thing. She, we had a lot to do again. <laughs> um, I went to school and I came home and I was like, "What's up, Nips? Rocked that spelling test," and she fell over. And, and like, my world just ended. Like it was so bad. Like my parents came home and I was in the breezeway, like rocking back and forth, cradling her little dead guinea pig body. Say things a nine-year-old should know they could say when someone dies. Like, she was too young! <laughs> should have been me! Take me! Damn it! <laughs> My parents are like, you're really not handling this well. <laughs> Shit. Um, do you want to like, have a funeral? Will that help? And I was like, I do. Yeah, so we did. We had a funeral for my dead guinea pig nips. Um, and I invited all of my closest friends which at the time was my parents, <laughs> my sister, my grandma, my parents' youper partners, because they were already over, and my dad said it wouldn't take that long. <laughs> and we, we had a funeral. It was cool. I decorated, a, I decorated a shoebox with glitter glue and filled it with, like, hay and old carrots and all of Nipsa's favorite things. Um, <laughs> I typed up a eulogy in Cork Express, because that used to be a thing. Uh, and I, I did that, and then I sang a very moving rendition of We Are One from The Lion King 2, a cappella, not a dry eye in the house, uh, which I would like to share with you guys. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, some, some deep cuts getting in there. All right. Uh, what? Okay, all right. Uh, sing it if you know it. <laughs> get, it, get it to my level. <laughs> Striker's a tall boy. We are one, you and I. We are like the earth and sky. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Our journey has only begun. That's right in the back. <laughs> we will stand by your side, filled with hope and filled with pride. Like Alliance Pride, that's why they wrote it like that. <laughs> <laughs> we are more than we are, we are family, family. <laughs> we are one, family, family. <laughs> we are one. And during that Lady Smith Blackman Monster breakdown, I just lost, I started crying. <laughs> I can see my dad laughing out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, it's cool, man. Everyone feels differently. <laughs> I think at that point, everyone was kind of like hoping that I would stop. Um, but I'm a performer, and the show must go on. <laughs> so I took it from the top and made everyone sit through another three minutes of me just cry singing this like shitty Disney sequel song. <laughs> When it was over, we buried Nips in the rose bush. It was like, it was a nice thing. Uh, I think she's still there. It was cool. Uh, and my grandma gave me this book, All God's Creatures Go to Heaven. And she was like, look, Sarah, I know you're upset right now. It seems like the end of the world. Nips is dead, but she's in heaven. You know, she's a guinea pig heaven. Someday you'll die and you'll go to people heaven. And I got so pissed off at this concept of segregate the heavens. <laughs> I'm like, you mean I'm never going to see her again? That doesn't help at all, Mama. You know? Uh, I was supposed to get baptized later that month. I was like, fuck it, Mom. What's he ever done for me? <laughs> Bad time. I got very curious about like my mortality at that point, uh, which I'm from a small town. Uh, people don't like you talking about stuff like that when you're nine. Uh, <laughs> I really wanted to like leave a will for my family, because I didn't want to leave them with the mess that we had, dividing all of Nips's assets. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to write a will, but I didn't know how they would work, and no one would answer me, so uh, I thought it was like a scavenger hunt, where I leave a bunch of clues all over my parents' house, <laughs> and whoever finds my will, like, gets all my Beanie Babies. That was how it works. It was actually very uh, good. Um, I got myself into a a weird position at work, seamless transition, yeah. um, where like I'm pretty sure everyone in my job thinks that I have a degree. I wasn't like shady or like deceptive about it, it just kind of happened. Like I think if you just have any amount of sense, everyone just assumes that you have a degree. Okay, all right, what happened? I got, I got a, a promotion like a year ago, which was a cool thing. Uh, I work at a hotel and my regional manager came to me 
brought me into the office and he was like, look, Sarah, you've done a great job standing at the front desk for the past year. Um, you know, you deserve a promotion. You deserve a little more. You know, you put in the work, you're very polite. You know, you, you studied at SIU, you got your degree. And I was like, oh, well, not so much. Like I did study at SIU. I understand why it might be a little misleading that my resume says, SIU Carbondale, 2008 to 2012. I get that now. <laughs> I understand now how that comes off. I have not earned a degree. And he was like, well, that's embarrassing. I've already told everyone I'm going to give you the job, so just have it and shut up. <laughs> cool. Um, so I did, and it, it's been pretty good. And it's just like, I don't say that I do or don't have a degree. Just whatever comes up. Someone's like, Sarah, where'd you go to school? I just say, yeah, I studied at SIU. And that's it, and I talk about something else. <laughs> they just kind of put the, they make the rest up. That's not my fault. <laughs> you know? I feel like I have, like, because I've had mild success as a hotel manager, that I have these, like, delusions of grandeur where I'm like, what can't I do? <laughs> you know, if I could be an, a passable hotel manager with no college education, like, how hard could it really be to be a dentist, you know? <laughs> I have pretty good teeth, I never had a cavity, the work speaks for itself. <laughs> it's like if someone told me I do, I could figure out what's the worst that could happen. I studied at SIU, you know? <laughs> like I could start a law practice. <laughs> I read books, so why not? It's, it's just good advice. That's all, I'll just tell people. All right, good. Uh, I was, I've always been like kind of a tomboy. Yeah, right, you see. Um, oh, I've always been kind of a tomboy. I, uh, when I was like 10 years old, I confided in my grandmother um, my deepest, darkest secret, which I've only ever told her and now you kind people. <laughs> Uh, that I wanted to be a ballerina. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Like I don't. <laughs> I developed like quite a reputation around my hometown as like a tomboy. You know, like I was walking around town with frogs in my shirt pocket, wearing shirts with pockets. You know, <laughs> it was GI Jane for Halloween three years in a row. No one stopped me. They just let me do it. And I was like, I can't be a ballerina. But I told my grandma, this is my dream. This is what I want to do: is be a ballerina. Um, I told her one night in her kitchen, and she she was cool about it. We hung out in the kitchen all night. She cooked me my favorite meal, fish sticks and kidney beans, <laughs> SpongeBob shapes, macaroni and cheese, my grandma's specialty. <laughs> um, and, and we I choreographed a beautiful ballet that night um, in her kitchen, and we went to bed. And we woke up in the morning, and she didn't bring it up. She didn't make me feel weird about it. We avoided eye contact most of the day, but it was cool. Um, and then we went uptown to her local grocery store, Bolin's, um, and there was a raffle there to win a remote control chocolate milk themed monster truck, which I entered, of course. Uh, and I won because I was the only child in Cesar, Illinois. <laughs> Uh, it was pretty cool, and I was like, I guess this is, ju this is just me. This is, this is my life. Um, my mom went through a phase a couple of years ago where she was having a yard sale every day. <laughs> it was a very dark time for the Burstage family. Uh, and it's my, my hometown, New Baby, is like, it's mostly, it's an established neighborhood is what you call it. It's mostly grown folks. It's old people. It's mostly old people. Um, and my mom realized like none of her stuff was selling at the yard sale really, so she wanted, she said that we needed to have them earlier and earlier, because that's when the old people want to buy things. <laughs> they get up early to get the good deals. I don't know. She tried to get rid of like a lot of really nice stuff. She sold what, my Sega Genesis like and, and an Sega CD for like five bucks, and I was like, why? Oh, that was good. And then she was trying to sell VHS tapes for like 10 bucks a piece. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> when, when stuff wouldn't move in the yard sale, she'd go out and put a sticker on it that said sold. 
<laughs> to try to build demand. <laughs> and I don't, that's not how yard sales work either. If you, you just take it with you, you don't <laughs> you're going to buy it later. <laughs> But she wanted, she had these yard sales like earlier and earlier. They just kept getting early in the morning. At one time, just to be an asshole, when she woke me up at like 4 a.m. to get ready for the yard sale, <laughs> and I was like, Mom, do I have to put on a bra for the yard sale today? <laughs> and she looked at me and said, Not with those tits. <laughs> That's all I got for you. Thank you very much. Have a good night.